Brothers and sisters, watch carefully how you live, not as foolish persons, but as wise, making the most of the opportunity because the days are evil. The days are evil. If you haven't heard what's going on in the church, um, consider yourself lucky. Absolutely unacceptable and atrocious things. Father Cook and I have been talking about it the past couple weeks. I'll tell you how the scandal affects us personally, how it affects you, how it affects the church. As a priest, I was always reluctant to become a priest uh, because whenever I encountered a priest, I would always kind of be on the defense. And I knew some really great priests. But it's because they represent a moral standard. They, they represent something um, just by their presence, by a priest's presence, they can challenge us on a way of living. I experienced that as a priest. Uh, I'll, I'll walk into a room and people will use a curse word. Oops, sorry, Father. Right? They, they just, they act differently around you. And that can be a lonely part of priesthood where, um, where you, you're just set apart so people can't be their, their normal selves around you. I was in, I was traveling somewhere in my collar and uh, I, don't, I don't remember if I was just a seminarian or I was a priest. I think I was a priest at this time. But uh, this, this a cute little kiddo like waved at me and was making faces. And so I was doing the same, you know. And once the mother saw, she became alerted and like, no, 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 no. Get away. And I was heartbroken because of how people view the church and the priests. Well, this awful sin, evil going on in the church only exasperates that for priests, where every priest becomes suspect. And that is a very, very lonely place to be for a priest. I can't tell you how upset I am and Father Cook about uh, these guys, these wolves in sheep clothing, sheep's clothing. Completely evil. Now, all of us are sinners. We all struggle with certain sins. Each of us. This is a church for sinners. As Pope Francis says, it's a, it's a field hospital. But as priests, as religious, especially as cardinals, as bishops, we're held to a much higher standard. And if we're, we don't live up to that higher standard, then it's all just fluff. You deserve to feel safe in your church. And anything less than that comes straight from Satan. I get so upset with this stuff because the empty pews next to you can be filled and some people are right on the fringe of coming to the Lord and it's stuff like this that just drives them further away. Completely unacceptable. Here at Christ the King, we, we follow the, the Archdiocese of Omaha um, safe environment training and we, we tell our, teach our kids the, the circle of grace. So hopefully we're doing everything that we can do. But still, what happened miles away, people we don't even know affects us here. Those in your life who are on the fringe of their faith, 
What do you say to them? How are you to explain this? And there's no explanation. We're fallen. And anyone who gets in a position of power, I've said this before, is, is um, sensitive to corruption, man or woman. This isn't a church problem alone. It's a society problem because teachers and politicians and Hollywood directors have done the same thing. And again, it's completely unacceptable and it's straight out of hell evil. Sometimes in the confessional, people will say, uh, Father, I was angry with my, my spouse. I was angry with my kids. Anger isn't a sin all the time. Jesus himself got angry. And so there's righteous anger. And you should get angry at this. Don't think that, well, I can't get angry because it's not holy. No, it is holy. But it's time for us to clean the church. It's time for us for this stuff to come forward and for the people who are responsible to get out and do their penance and work it out with the Lord because they're only harming the flock further in a time that's confusing and a time, as this says, the days are evil. So whatever you need to do, do. Write the bishop, write the pope, write the cardinals. Whatever you want to do, do it. Show them your outrage because this can't go on. Why it's worse for the church is because we're supposed to mimic Jesus himself. We're supposed to model his love and his mercy. And if you read the stories that have come out, when I was, I won't read them. Father Cook told me about them and I wanted to throw up could not believe that someone could do this. And again, I understand weaknesses and sins. But it's almost demonic, mocking the Lord. And then some of these bishops and cardinals refuse to step down. I don't understand. We had a retreat with, with Cardinal Raymond Burke, and it was at a time when I first learned uh, about the enemies of the church. I didn't really know that the church had enemies. So the Masons are a, a declared enemy of the church. For, um, for hundreds of years, they've tried to infiltrate and undermine the church. And I asked him about this. I said, I'm reading this book about the Masons, and um, they want to destroy the church. They've tried from outside, and now they're going to try from inside. And he leaned in, and he, and he said, it's already happening. And I was scandalized because this isn't the church that I know. It's already happening in our time. It's already been infiltrated. We're called to be holy. And it's really hard during days of evil. We're all called to be saints. Brothers and sisters, I have to apologize to you on behalf of the church. Because this is not the church that I promised to be a priest for. This is not what I signed up for. It's not what you come and live your faith out day in and day out. It's a cancer within the church that needs to be cut out and thrown away. And whatever we need to do to do that, we need to do. For those who are affected by this personally, whether it was a priest or 
you know, an uncle or whatever, I'm sorry. It should not be. And if you haven't reached out to get help and to heal, please do that because you deserve that and it shouldn't have happened. So what do, where do we go from here? Well, I have good news. Jesus said, the gates of hell will not prevail against my church. And he said, I will not abandon my church. And as ugly and as sinful and as evil as things can be in the hierarchy, Jesus remains faithful. He still will show up on this altar. He still will show up in the confessionals. He still will hear and answer your prayers because of his great love and mercy. And I got to say, I'm getting a new understanding of the Lord's mercy. Because if I were him, I wouldn't forgive any of these guys. It's a good thing I'm not. It's a good thing the Lord is the Lord and I'm not. You deserve to be safe and feel safe in your church. And if you don't, please let me know. Pray for Father Cook and I and all priests because we get wrapped up in this. It's very easy to generalize. But also take a look at the world. See how much abuse goes on. Raise your kids in the faith so that they can know right and wrong and choose it. We have a priest crisis because the priest is so um, intrinsically connected with the sacraments. No priest, no Eucharist. No priest, no confession. No priest, no uh, last rites. And we don't have many of us. So the young men who are thinking about it, who catch wind of this, why would they sign up? Continue to encourage and to show your faith in the church. Continue to encourage the young men who may have a vocation. Because I promise you, not every priest, not every cardinal, not every bishop are like, like these men. These are dark times in our church. But this is exactly the reason Jesus came to this world. To be a light in the darkness, to scatter the darkness, to bring the faithful to the truth, to bring the faithful to authentic love so that we can be at peace. It's probably going to get worse before it gets better but I implore you, pray, do penance for us, for the church, that we can come out of this ahead, that we can heal from this, that we can restore things to the way that they should have been and, and should be now.